Hey guys, welcome to another video for Anatomy and Physiology. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the somatic reflexes. So as we talk about the reflexes, let's first get a basic introduction of what a reflex is. Uh, the nature of reflexes involves four essential steps. Okay, the first one being that it requires stimulation. These are not spontaneous actions. You have no control over these, but they do require some sensory input. For example, you know, accidentally touching something hot or sharp. They're also very quick, okay? So these involve very few interneurons, if any at all, and there's minimum synaptic delay, so very quick. So because they're quick, they're also very involuntary, which means you don't have any control of, over these. These are essentially automatic. These happen without your awareness, without your intent, uh, very difficult to suppress uh, this, um, this reflex or any of these reflexes that we're gonna talk about um, in the next uh, few minutes. And so awareness on, on the human part uh, usually comes after the fact, okay? Now, lastly, they're stereotyped. What this means is that they're essentially, uh, the, the response is essentially the same every single time. It's a very predictable response, unlike um, the variability of voluntary muscles. So for example, when I touch something sharp or hot, uh, the response will be a, typically a reflex of some sort, okay? So they're stereotyped. Now, much like the action itself is a stereotype, uh, is stereotyped, the the pathway that these uh, signals take is also, for the most part, the, for, uh, the same. Now, they differ a little bit in the spinal cord depending on how complex the movement is. So, if it's, if it's just your arm snatching back compared to your whole body, you know, uh, withdrawing back, uh, then of course that's going to involve a little bit more uh, interneurons in the body because that require that's going to involve a lot more muscles. Uh, moving and changing and um, calibrating and such. So uh, this pathway that they all, that, that, that they take, that this signal takes, this pathway is called a reflex arc. You know, to illustrate this, try to imagine, um, you know, every time that you go, you drive to school or you drive to your, no, your local grocery store, you're gonna essentially take the same pathway, right? If it's a simple trip to the grocery store, you're most likely going to take the exact same pathway every single time. But let's say you got to go to the grocery store and then you got to do some clothes shopping or you want to go buy a book at a bookstore. Now, now it's becoming a little bit more complex and perhaps maybe to become more efficient, you're going to take a different pathway. Okay, So the complexity changes uh, the, uh, with the amount of uh, increased coordination that is required. So for the reflex arc, for, but for, for essentially though, the reflex arc is going to take the, this same pathway uh, and we're going to keep describing this over and over again with each particular reflex that uh, that we'll discuss. So first of all, you're going to have some uh, you're going to have somatic receptors, and these are going to be in the skin, muscles, or tendons. Okay. So the skin, you have pressure receptors, you have pain receptors that uh, are going to be initiated uh, with with a particular stimulus. Okay. So that's that stimulation that we talked about earlier that is required for the for uh, a reflex to even get started. All right, and so with the somatic receptors, then you're going to have afferent nerve fibers, and this signal, this is the actual signal that goes from the somatic receptors that gets shot up the arm or the, or the leg, and it carries the information to the posterior horn of the spinal cord. Okay, and you're going to notice that. So take notice of that. Every time that we that we initiate a response, you're going to see the signal go into the spinal cord, and you're going to see that nerve fiber. Okay, it's going to bifurcate, and it's going to it's going to split up into the, a, a posterior horn and an anterior horn, okay? And every time that a signal gets sent to the spinal cord, it's going to go through the posterior horn. And then once it enters in the spinal cord, it's going to go into what's called an integrated center that's located in the gray matter in the spinal cord. So you'll see two horns. So you'll see the spinal cord and then the two horns. You'll have a lateral, uh, two lateral horns, and the gray matter will be the, at the center, okay? And it's, it'll be grayish. And then, uh, and then we have the eff efferent fibers. Okay, so you have afferent fibers that go into the spinal cord, and then you have efferent fibers that e exit the spinal cord. Okay, so this is a signal that got integrated in, in the spinal cord, and now it's being sent out, and it's being sent out to um, to your motor, to your uh, to your muscles. Okay, so this will be the impulse that the muscle, the action that the muscle will then take. And so as I mentioned, it goes from the efferent fibers finally to the effectors, the actual muscle itself that will be either contracted or it will be 
um, or, or there'll be an inhibition signal that will require it not to contract, it'll just stay relaxed, okay? So keep this reflex arc in mind with every single reflex that we will discuss. So the first example of a reflex arc that we're going to look at is a tendon reflex. And to be more specific, we're going to look at the patellar tendon reflex arc. Okay, we've been through this before with a doctor checkup or they'll check your reflexes. Uh, you'll sit on the table and he'll, he'll lightly tap on your patellar tendon with a hammer. And that's going to initiate a signal that's going to shoot up the leg. Okay, so that, that signal will excite the nerve endings, as we mentioned before. And then that signal will go up the afferent fiber. Okay, it goes up the afferent fiber and then goes into the spinal cord, or before it goes into the spinal, spinal cord, it goes into the dorsal root, the posterior side, the posterior horn uh, of the dorsal root. Okay, remember we mentioned that before? So it goes up the posterior dorsal root and then it, it, it goes into the spinal cord, the interneurons. This is the integrating center now. All right, so in the spinal cord. Now notice here that, that this path is going from the spinal cord and then it's going to go into the anterior uh, the anterior root, and, and notice that it completely bypasses the brain, right? We mentioned before how ref the, how these um, reflexes are quick and they're involuntary, so this does not require any processing in the brain. So we're in the integrating center now, and at this point, there, it's, another signal is going to be sent through the anterior horn, okay? It's going to go to the anterior horn, and this this signal is going to go to the quadriceps, Okay, and at the same time that that signal goes to the quadriceps, there's another inhibitory signal that goes sent that gets sent to the flexors, to the hamstrings. Okay, and so that inhibitory signal is going to prevent the hamstrings from contracting. Okay, so they're going to stay relaxed, and then the excitatory signal will go to the quadriceps, which is going to cause the quadriceps to contract, and it's going to shorten, and then that will result in the patellar reflex. Okay, so again, this is called the patellar tendon reflex arc with reciprocal inhibition of antagonistic muscle. Okay, so it inhibits the antagonistic muscle and it allows, and it allows the uh, primary muscle, the uh, effector muscle, right? This is the last, the last part of the, of the uh, arc. It allows the effector to contract and cause that reflex to, um, to initiate. So again, this is a tendon reflex, and this this tendon reflex is kind of throughout the uh, throughout the human body with uh, anywhere that you're going to have a tendon. And so what you have here is a this is a femur, and with a with a you know with a muscle cut. And we're going to take a, a a closer look at that tendon muscle relationship that's happening there. And you'll see that these tendons have have nerve fibers that are that are uh, very comp. Uh, complexly uh, integrated into that fiber okay so you have the tendon organ you have the tendon bundles and then the muscle fibers and these nerve endings these fibers are integrated and wrapped around uh, very closely with each muscle fiber and so what will happen is is that um, as the body is moving it's exercising running around it these stretch fibers as, as the tendon is stretched and they send a signal to the brain or they send a signal to the spinal cord basically telling it that it's being overworked and overstretched and it'll cause the body to do a reflex where, you know, you, you see this a lot when you have an athlete running and all of a sudden you start to see them. Or if you've ever been gone running and you're, you feel your, your hamstring tighten up, for example, or, or maybe your Achilles is getting overworked and you'll start to kind of limp. You, you kind of half limp, half run. That's your body's way of like preventing the muscle contractions needed to, to you to go full force. Now, what will happen sometimes, okay, if you apply enough force to that tendon and that if that force, uh, if that force is, is applied too fast and it doesn't allow for that tendon reflex to, to initiate, causing you to kind of to hold up and to hit the brakes before you tear, sometimes if you go, if it happens too fast, then it will actually cause a tear. And, and you know, one of the ones that we talk about in class a lot is the Achilles the Achilles tendon tear, the calcane uh, calcaneus tendon to tear, all right? And again, that happens when you apply way too much force, way too quickly, and not allowing the body to, to relax, uh, to prevent a, a full tear. So let's move along into the withdrawal reflex now. And as I continue, I want to kind of stop and pause and take a look at everything that's happening again and the different aspects of uh, the reflex arc. 
So again, we first start off with the somatic receptors, the pain receptors in the hand, foot, wherever it may be. And that signal will travel up the afferent axon, okay? And that's gonna be on the dorsal, the dorsal root. And then it'll leave the spinal cord on the efferent root, and it exits, E, efferent, exits. And then uh, that signal gets processed in the spinal cord in the integrating system, or the integrating uh, uh, center that is in the spinal cord. And so then it'll travel again the efferent axon, it exits, and then eventually lends, um, ends up in the muscles, the effectors, okay, the contracting muscle. Now remember that there's going to be a, an inhibitory signal also to the antagonistic mu muscles to uh, keep those muscles relaxed. Mm -hmm. All right, so you have a hand, you accidentally touch a hot pot that initiates the somatic receptors, and it sends a signal, it sends a signal down the afferent dorsal fiber of the um, of the nerve right and it goes ends up in the spinal cord into the integrating center and then you have your interneurons that process that signal and then they send the signal right back the efferent the, it exits the spinal cord landing back at the effector muscles causing a contraction causing a withdrawal very quick withdrawal uh, very quick very fast very stereotyped the same response every time it's probably happened to you a million times the exact same way you cannot suppress it. There's no intent. It's involuntary, very quick, right? Now we're going to be looking at a more complicated scenario that typically happens. Now, keep in mind that the withdrawal reflex, there's an orchestra of things happening in the human body. And so we're really trying to simplify what's happening here. So again, this is a withdrawal with crossed extensor reflex. So what does that mean? So let's let's play out a scenario where you're walking around. This has actually happened to me a couple of times. There's two times in my life that I can remember specifically stepping on a, a nail. I was playing basketball in my neighborhood and we were actually on our way to the basketball court and my buddies and I were messing around and I stepped on a nail and it went right into my shoe and right into my foot. Uh, luckily there was a fire, the fire department was like right down the street and the fireman came over and just yanked the nail out and I was like, all right, man, I'm good. <laughs> and we just continued on our way to play basketball. I don't even think I got a tetanus shot. I don't even think I ever told my parents. Um, but in any case, I digress. So uh, the scenario here is that you're walking around and you're stepping, you step in a nail. And so here you have the somatic receptors, the pain receptors shoot a signal up, uh, down the, up the dorsal root of the, of the, of the uh, nerve, the axon, ending up in the spinal cord. And then you have the integrating system, the interneurons at the spinal cord, uh, signaling by the, the green that you have there. And then of course, you know what happens next right you have a signal that exits right the uh, efferent nerve fibers and they end up at the quad at the hamstring right now this time it's at the hamstring because this reflex your leg wants to shoot up right so your hamstrings your flexors are going to be initiated they're going to get engaged they're going to contract causing the foot to go up so that the, the nail doesn't go up any further into your foot and at the same time, you have an inhibitory signal to the quadriceps, causing that, keeping that relaxed, so it does not uh, it does not fight the contracting muscle to keep your leg from. You know, the last thing you want to do is to keep stepping on that nail on purpose, right? All right. So now, the interesting thing is, is that you know, as you're thinking about the scenario, when that foot goes up, because that's the planting foot, right? That means that the opposite foot is gonna to have to now take control and it's gonna to have to uh, take the, 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 your body weight. Otherwise, it'll just fall out of the ground, which does happen sometimes, right? If you step on something short, you might actually, be, you know, you may, not, you may not have your other foot ready to, to plant to, to then carry the weight, because now your whole body's off balance. Now, again, I said there's an orchestra of things that happen. Um, in, in addition to that foot taking on the weight, your, your center of gravity shifting from the planting foot to the other foot you know your abs your core like all you know all these other auxiliary muscles are engaged to transfer your your center of gravity from one part of the body to the other instantly right otherwise you'll fall so your flexor your leg to keep the foot from getting uh from keeping the nail getting driven up the foot even deeper it contracts, it reflexes, right? The withdrawal reflex. And then now we have the cross extensor reflex. And if you're looking at the spinal cord now, now you see that there's actually, there's more interneurons that are being involved, right? There's, 
there's more coordination that is involved, so there's more uh, nerve fibers that are having to be involved. And so with this cross-coordination, you have another signal that's being sent, okay? And this signal on the opposite leg, the, the other side of the spinal cord, this is going to initiate, it's going to engage your quadriceps. So this is actually the opposite of the leg that's reflexing, right? Because on the leg that's reflexing, the quadriceps are inhibited. But on the leg that's now being engaged to take the body weight, now they're being engaged, to, the quadriceps are. And so you can guess what's going to happen to the hamstrings, right? If you guess that they're going to be inhibited, then you are correct. So the other leg is taking on the body weight, so the quadriceps are going to contract, hamstrings are going to relax, and the body is going to shift. The body weight is going to shift to the other leg. Okay, guys. Well, that does it for uh, reflexes. We talked about the tendon reflex, the re uh, withdrawal reflex, the patellar tendon reflex, and the withdrawal with extension. Okay, guys, I uh, hope this helped. Thanks for watching, and good luck on your study.